I may be walking in the streets of a city called Amsterdam By the dust on my boots and the rhythm of my feet and my heartbeat Say Africa Say Africa Hi Today I'm going to talk about Vanity by Birago Diop. Now the first five lines of Vanity is if we tell gently, gently all that we shall one day have to tell who then will hear our voices without laughter? Sad, complaining voices of beggars who indeed will hear them? without laughter. Now Virago Diop was a Senegalese writer, he was a veterinarian, he was a politician, as a diplomat. He was born in 1906 and he died in 1989. Now the poem we're going to look at, uh, Vanity, is published and I have it here, it's in Professor Mwaga's 1967 anthology called West African Verse. It's also published in uh, Wolish Inca's Poems of Black Africa, published in 1975. But even before then, it was published in Presents African, an African journal, 1951. Now, Presence African is a very important uh, journal in African literary history. It was founded in Paris in 1947 by the Senegalese man Alioun Diop, and it still runs to this very day. Now, it's a landmark journal because it was founded along with writers like Aimé Césaire, Léopold Senghor, Jean-Paul Sartre, among others, and it was one of the earliest platforms for African poets from Francophone countries, but important to other places uh, outside Francophone West Africa. It presented one of the first places where Anglophone writers could be translated into French. So they published translations of the writings of Chinua Achebe, Wale Shoyinka, Ngugi Wathiongo, Kwame Nkrumah, Julius Nyerere. I'll leave a link uh, to the Presents African website below. Uh, there's a repository of wonderful, wonderful texts that you might decide to go through. So, in addition to the 1951 publication, Vanity was published again in Presents African in 1960, and this contained a collection of, of Diop's writings between 1925 and 1960. It was called Lueurs, Lueurs et Lueurs, Lueurs and Glimmerings, as a play on French words. Now, his other poems, in addition to Vanity, in the collection include names like things like a poem titled Rumours, Incantations, Breath, Refuge, Torment, Sympathy, Loyalty. So we have a backdrop here that in Vanity, it was part of a wider scope of work exploring different ranges of emotions. And additional link to that 1960 work will be below. Now, I don't know who translated Vanity into English, so we know it is a French poem, Senegalese. Uh, many of the writers wrote in French and it was translated into English. I don't know who translated it. I think the work of translators are actually very important. Perhaps Diop spoke, uh, Virago Diop spoke English as well as French. But if you do know who the translators are, do leave a note in the comments so I can highlight that. I think the work of translators is very, very important to the spread of literature all over the world. Now, I'll go on to the poem. Now, what is it about? Basically, vanity is, is simply saying if we refuse to listen, if we refuse to heed the signs that are already there, when it is our turn to speak, there might be no one willing to listen to us. So we now move on to the poetics. Who is the poet addressing? Well, everyone and no one. So it is a rhetorical question, he does not expect a response. So in line 5 when it says, who indeed will hear them without laughter? And in line 10 when it says, what eyes will watch our large mouth? A reply is not expected. Another tool used is the use of repetition. Line 1, gently, gently, if we tell gently, gently, it's repeated for emphasis. And it is marked in, contra in contrast to the idea that no one's actually listening. And in lines 21 and lines 24, we have the repeated verse where they have traced their signs, where they have traced their signs, is emphasizing that signs indeed have been left. 
line 25 gives away our theme. And since we did not understand our dead, who are the dead? Uh, Barago Diop wrote a lot about ancestors, about ancestry, about listening to people who have gone before. So that's an important theme in this work. So yet another tool used is metaphor. Line 4 talks about sad, complaining voices of beggars, likens them to beggars, their voices to those of beggars. Um, line 12 to 13, um, what ear to our pitiful anger which grows in us like a tumour. So it's likened to a tumour as well. Oxymoron is another tool that is used. It's another figure of speech. An oxymoron is when you use contradictory terms appearing side by side. Pitiful anger. So even though it's pitiful, it still does not evoke sympathy. So the general theme of this poem is about condemnation for those who have not followed the signs left by those who have gone past. So what does this mean and what are the implications for us today? Now for Diop, publishing this in 1951, this was a colonial time before Senegalese independence of 1960, when there was conflict between assimilating from Senegalese into a new French dominant world while trying to maintain cultural roots. We're in a post-colonial time, things are different, but somehow still the same. So what messages do you think vanity holds for us today? Of a city called Amsterdam By the dust on my boots and the rhythm of my feet And my heartbeat, say Africa Say Africa Say Africa